So I think it's, I think it's now 13.50, so given the dire warnings that I, I had in the emails about overrunning, I'd better start on time. Um, hi everyone, my name's uh, Winston Bond. Um, I'm here to talk about um, the, the new addition this year to the OWASP top 10 mobile vulnerabilities list. Um, so I, I'm actually a late stand-in. So some the, the pre-conference publicity was uh, talking about a gentleman called Jonathan Carter, who was going to be doing this talk, but unfortunately he can't make it over from California. So uh, I'm doing it instead. So that's, that's a slightly good news, bad news story. Um, the bad news is that I'm, I'm much, much less aware of the OWASP process and, and what went into the development of the top 10 um, and, and to, you know, possibly some of the, you know, any, if there's any historical stuff or sensitivities or anything, I'm much less conscious of that. Um, the good news is I'm, I'm pretty well on top of the subject. You know, I have been doing it for, I've been working in this kind of arena for about six years, so I believe I know what I'm talking about. Um, but, but go easy on me with the questions, okay? So... Um, uh, so that, that's the introduction. Um, what, what's our talk about, or the talk, um, uh, it's, it's mainly just to, just to try and go over what this, you know, addition to the top ten is. It's, um, uh, you know, what does it mean, why does it matter, um, to some degree, what can you do about it? Um, so the, 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 um, I think the, t or the, the name of the vulnerability is, is lack of binary protections. Basically, it boils down to someone can take your mobile app and poke around with it or change it. Um, so unless you've done something about that, you've got a bit of a problem on your hands um, in some circumstances. Oh, I'm going to pause. I found this when I, came, when I was coming into some of these talks. Everyone bunches up at that end, so it's really hard to find a seat halfway through. So, so just come on past, I, you know. Um, okay, so this is just a, a separating slide, there's not a lot to say. So we're just going to talk, I'm going to talk in, in a little bit more detail about what this addition to the top 10 is. Um, so or, or what the top 10 is. So the OWASP top 10 was, un, was, was updated uh, in January with some um, you know, different vulnerabilities. And I guess given a year of experience since the first OWASP mobile top 10 was, was announced, um, there, were some, you know, there were some ups and some downs. Um, in the hit parade of, of, of what's, what's viewed as important, this, you know, or, or the, the relative merit or relative importance of these things, um, and was added to, um, you know, the, this extra category at the end was added, um, lack of binary protection. Um, so, I mean, so some of these, I'm not going to go through them all in, in great detail, mostly because I don't know them in great detail. Um, so the top of the list, obviously, insecure data storage if you're data on your mobile phone is, is insecure, just like on any computing platform, it's easy to get at. Um, uh, weak server-side controls. Some of these are kind of, I, I read through these and they are, they're very much the same as, as you'd have in a web application. You know, um, a, a sort of thin client web app, you know, you're worried about <coughs> client-side injection and people uh, you know, typing the right cryptic runes into a text box to, to, to do a SQL you know, query on your database. Um, so that's still there, and if you've written your mobile app just like a web app, that's going to be there. Um, but, you know, really, they have the ultimate power on a, on a mobile app. We're back in the thick client world again, where the, you know, the client application does stuff. It doesn't just, you know, send key presses through to your web server. Um, so they have the ability to, you know, make that mobile app send off its own SQL query if you've got that vulnerability. Um, um, if, you know, if they f reverse engineer it, figure out how it works, change it, they can do what they like. Um, you know, I guess yeah, poor, poor authentication. You know, if your login process doesn't work, it's still not going to work in a, in a mobile app. Um, and in fact, in some ways, it's worse because you want, you want it to be simpler in a mobile app. Typing in your 16-digit ID number and you know, seven, seven digits out of 54 for your password and all the rest of it, that's very hard to do in a mobile app. 
um, slightly defeats the purpose. Um, so anyway, you know, they're all you know, important vulnerabilities, some kind of coming over from the web world, uh, and some, you know, like this one, back in you know, the issues you have to deal with when the client has, has a brain or is a little bit more than just a display. Um, so what, what is it all about? Um, so top of the list, you know, basically, you, you, your mobile app is out there. It's on someone's phone. You know, probably half the people in this room are pen testers and know how to take it off your phone without an awful lot of difficulty. Even if you're not a pen tester, it's not that hard. Um, so you can get it off. You can fiddle around with it. You know, have a look at what it's doing. Um, it's, it's not difficult, and you know, if, it's not even expensive. If you're a, you know, for Android apps, for example, you can do all the tools to reverse engineer it are free. Um, and then they can, you know, your you know, person who's doing that um, can then, you know, change that binary potentially, put it back together, load it back on the phone, distribute it through a different place, through a, not, not a Play Store, through a, a different app store. Um, and, you know, it can do whatever it wants to do on, on somebody's phone. Um, and the damage that causes, who knows, really? You know, it, it, it can be all kinds of different things. Um, if it's your mobile, if you're a big company, it's your mobile app that gets, you know, cracked in some way, that doing something weird to people's phones, in the end, the blame is going to end up with you, even if it wasn't your fault. Um, um, you know, or it can be more, you know, more directly damaging. If, you're, uh, if someone figures out how to break the login system for your, um, your banking app and, and starts to steal money off people, you know, it's real money kicking around. Um, if you have some, you know, super secret algorithm on the, um, on running on the mobile phone, and someone can reverse engineer how that works, again, that might be bad, or you know, that probably is bad. You know, is there much chance of the super secret algorithm running on the mobile phone rather than locked in the data center? I don't know. It depends. It depends on who you are. Um, there are circumstances where it might be running on the mobile phone. Um, if you've got a phone app, I don't know, figuring out how you drive and, and working out your insurance premium, you know, that's going to have to do a lot of stuff on the phone. It's not going to be telling, you know, a server, or it can't tell the server, you know, every three seconds, you know, what you're doing with the, with the accelerator. Um, so all of that stuff is there. It's open to being reverse engineered and fiddled around with, if necessary, by somebody. So that's the <coughs> vulnerability. Um, I'm running ahead of myself, aren't I? So, what, what, are the, what, what do these kind of attacks result in? So, um, I guess, you know, one other thing we can, that somebody might be able to do is if you have security controls that you've embedded into the thing to stop certain kinds of attack, they might be able to dodge them. Um, so, an obvious one on that is jailbreak detection. You know, if you, if you go down a route of, of deciding that your app is only going to run on non-jailbroken, non-rooted devices, um, then you are going to have to sort of uh, toughen that up a little bit because people are going to try, try to dodge it. They're going to try and cut it off. You're, going to have, you know, you're into a, a bit of a fight with, with the people who want to run it on a, on a, on a jailbroken device. You know, whether it's right or wrong doesn't really matter. Um, you know, there are circumstances where you probably would want to stop that um, because if you're running on the jailbroken rooted device, it's kind of the, the th opening, starting to open up the security model. You know, that, you know, people want the freedom to have the free copy of Angry Birds or whatever, but on the other hand, they'll be really cross when, you know, when their bank account gets emptied. Um, so, that, you know, you have to stop people, you know, compromising the things you've put in there. Um, you know, you can have the sensitive information in there, potentially. Um, whether there should or shouldn't be that sensitive information in that app is probably open to argument, and there's, there's probably lots and lots of best practices that say don't put sensitive things in apps. Sometimes you've just got to. You can't avoid it. Um, or sometimes they're just there, and you know, nobody's done the right things to, to uh, eliminate those vulnerabilities in advance. Um, and then, you know, back to the same point, you know, someone can, you know, if, if someone 
is able to reverse engineer that app and take out some of the logic if your if your mobile app is doing the stuff that stops people launching SQL attack, injection attacks. It's probably a bad idea anyway, but um, if that's where you've put that um, that logic, someone might might bypass it. Oh, this continuing with things. Oh, you know, I guess other things. Yeah, you know, someone ha you know, uses your your app to uh, or repackages your app with something else in there. That's probably you know, that is a bad thing. Um, uh, we've talked about you know reverse engineering on you know, some applications being a problem. Um, and I guess also, you know, the, the, the reverse engineering step is, the, is, is a step in the road towards understanding vulnerabilities. So if your mobile app is, is controlling what your server is doing, then understanding what the mobile app does is a good step towards understanding how to drive the server and make it do what you want it to do. Um, am I just repeating myself here? I am, aren't I? Um, so, you know, the last one, you know, IP theft... Um, talked about that. Um, piracy, you know, getting a free copy, you know, uh, you know, cutting off the licensing. That's, in mobile apps, that's not generally huge, you know, well, it's there, it, it exists, you know, you go to the Cydia store and you can get, get yourself whatever you like, really. Um, and, but, you know, does anybody really care enough to, to, to do much about it? You know, when you're talking about a, a, a 99p game, probably not really. Um, but you know, if, if if you end up with a mobile app that is that has a significant price tag, then if you've got I don't know, a sat nav application for a hundred pounds rather than you know one, then all of a sudden stopping somebody pirating that becomes a bit more interesting. Um, How prevalent are these attacks? I think there's a, there was a, an HP research you know, effort um, that the gentleman outside was telling me earlier on was, you know, they, they looked at 1,000 mobile apps um, uh, on a, on a well-known application distribution platform for mobiles, mobile apps um, and discovered that you know, most of them are, are vulnerable to an attack of some kind and most of them don't do anything at all to stop you you know, reverse engineering them or modifying them. Um, so what those vulnerabilities are, I guess everyone is going to have its own vulnerability in, you know, in their own different ways. Whether they matter or not, again, that depends on who it is and what it is. You know, if it's the, I don't know, the One Direction application, you're probably not that bothered, really. Um, uh, you know, pick the boy band of your choice. I don't know, I'm not trying to... Um, promote anyone in particular. Um, but, you know, again, if it is a, a, a movie player application for, you know, DRM-protected movies, that certainly the people who, who, you know, sell the movies to you will be quite bothered about that. Um, and they will want to make sure that they are, you know, as tough as they can be in, in protecting them. So again, you know, what do people want to do when they're attacking these things? Same stuff we've already talked about. You know, bypassing the security controls that you've put in there. So you know, jailbreak detection stuff to keep the DRM um, from being bypassed or finding the keys inside it. You know, potentially adding, you know, somebody adds their own code, redistributes it, um, um, you know, repackages your app as their own uh, <coughs> to. I guess you can, where, where would you want to do that? I, and I guess if you wanted to produce your own Flappy Birds clone in the easiest possible way, you'd take the original one and repackage it. Um, um, and then, you know, stealing information about users, which is a sort of classic web vulnerability and something that people, you know, are concerned about. If you've got a, a modified version of an app that's then going sending off user credentials off to your own private server somewhere, um, then that's not, you know, you as, 
a big company whose app is being attacked in that way, that's going to be a bit of a problem for you in the long term. Um, um, I can't remember, you know, I wish I could remember the details, but I read some, you know, a report a couple of months ago about, you know, a mobile app being attacked through, a, through the, one of the kind of vulnerabilities we're talking about here um, to redirect, to, to send off login credentials off to another server. Um, for no apparent purpose, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a bad thing, isn't it, if your login credentials are getting sent somewhere. Um, So the, this is trying to kind of show different areas of risk that you have, you know, business risk. Um, is someone going to steal your money? Operational risk, is someone going to break your system? Technical risk, I guess that's, that boils down to is someone going to work out how your software works and steal it? Um, and, and you can kind of separate those into two parts. There's confidentiality side to it and an integrity side to it, which again, you know, to boil it down even simpler terms, one is, you know, the confidentiality is one, one is understanding how your code works, and the other one is changing it, um, which are two sides of the same coin. You, you know, it's kind of hard to change it until you understand how it works. Um, ask anyone who does maintenance on big company software. Um, but it's, you know, so the first step, you know, we're gonna, so I'm going to talk about these in reverse order, but the, so... To, to code modification, what, what are the risks, what people might be doing? So repackaging it, you know, um, uh, you know changing it, redistributing it. Um, uh, method swizzling, anyone, anyone heard of method swizzling? Excellent, that's good, some at least. So method swizzling is a, is a wonderful thing. Um, it's a lovely feature of the Objective-C language where you can redirect what things do at runtime. Uh, without changing the code. Um, so, you know, as a developer, it's a great thing. Um, if you're, you know, and, and it's one of the people, the thing, the sorts of thing that people like about Objective-C as a programming language. From a security point of view, it's an absolute nightmare because someone can take your lovely jailbreak detection routine and they can say, actually, I don't need that one anymore. I'm going to use my own that does nothing at all. Um, and you can do that at runtime um, without changing the, the, the code for the software. Um, you do have to be on a jailbroken phone to do it, though. Um, security control bypass. So that's you know if you've got your own stuff in there to uh, you know check your environment, check that no one's changed anything, you know, make sure it's all legitimate. People are going to try and get around that. Um, I guess that this is the same. You know, jailbreak root detection disabling is in the same category, um, where Go for it. That's all right. Um, um, so yeah, people will also, you know, will try to, you know, turn off your jailbreak detection um, because it's their right. Um, presentation layer, so making your your UI show different things. Um, key replacement, or key, you know, I, I guess the first. The first step against, you know, someone finding your key is to use an algorithm where even if they find the key, it doesn't matter. Um, the trouble then, you know, so you're into public key. The vulnerability there is, well, maybe they'll just find your key and put, put one where they already know the other half. So they're not going to work out a, par a private key from a public key, fair enough. But if they already know the other side, they can just replace the one that's buried in your code. Um, which then lets them do a, a man in the middle or something like that, again, you know, on you. Yeah, go for it. Um, so there are, you know, there's, you know, there's a, a number of risks. I'm sure there's others. You know, it's basically if you can, if you can modify the app, you can make the app do anything you want. Um, and what anything you want is, is, is up to you and whether it matters or not, again, depends on who you are. So this is, this is the swizzling example um, where, you know, here's a bit of Objective-C code um, that, that basically says, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, a method. I must remember the word. Sorry. You know, I'm an old-fashioned guy. I call them functions. But there's a method which, uh, 
you know, it takes two parameters. One is your username and one is your password and um, says whether you can log in or not. It's probably not a very wise piece of design anyway, but it's an example. Um, so somebody could come along and just replace that whole thing and say, yeah, we're always going to be happy. You know, as far as the app's concerned, we've always logged in. The world's good. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, the standard runtime on the phone isn't going to do anything to detect that or stop that. Um, you know, it's designed that way. That's what it's for. Um, the next one, yeah, similarly, you know, here, this is, again, another Objective-C iOS example um, where someone, you know, goes through and finds your function that says, are we jailbroken? Um, and, you know, we'll override it. So, you know, first off, they'll, they'll, they'll probably just swizzle the whole thing out of the way so that it's always going to be happy. Um, if they don't do that, they could just make it return true all the time. Sorry, true, true, false, false. You'd want false, wouldn't you? Um, uh, so it's always going to be, you know, it's always going to say happy. Um, although to do that, they'd then have to be, you know, that's changing the code. They'd have to re-sign it um, to make it work very far. In any case, you know, this string here is going to be going to be blindingly obvious in the code. So they'll they'll you know they'll be able to find that uh, in the code, understand how your your simple jailbreaking detection works. Um, and then know that if they rename Cydia.app to something else, then you're never going to find it. Um, so there's you know, th this piece of code, which you know, this is source code, but you could get you could get that back off the binary on the phone fairly fairly simply. Um, even if you don't go and buy a, a decompiler, you could you could get the uh, get the assembler code and you'd understand that really quite quickly. Um, The other side of this is the reverse engineering part. So really, this, this ought to come first because this is the first thing you'd have to do is get your app, figure out what it's doing. Um, so what are the risks? So there's the method signatures. So again, in well, actually all of the, uh, so either Java for Android or Objective-C on iOS, um, you know, all the method names and the parameter names and the, you know, just what it looks like. Or, or what your you know, well-engineered well software design says about itself um, is all exposed in the binary, so you can, you can just read that. Go ahead, just go to the other side. It's probably the simplest. <laughs> Don't worry, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, well, you know, all of your, you know, all the things that as a well-trained software engineer you do by giving things nice friendly names, that's all there to, to help someone understand your binary um, unless you do something about it. Uh, API monitoring, so um, you know, people will be able to figure out what you're doing by looking at what, you know, what system APIs you're calling and monitoring those at runtime potentially um, or changing, you know, redirecting them at runtime if necessary. Um, Exposed data, so again, you know, the data and the strings and the crypto keys and all the rest of it that you have embedded in your binary are, you know, are there for, for anyone to find and have a look at and, and do what they want with. Um, decompilation, you know, trivially simple on Java, .NET, um, a bit harder on, on uh, Objective-C and C code, but still doable. Um, and you can certainly analyze it to, to work out what's going on. Um, I guess, well, application decryption, that's, that's, I really should have put that at the top. Yeah, so that's the first thing you have to do. Um, application packages on, on iOS are encrypted. So if you just take the thing that, that Xcode, sorry, not Xcode, um, iTunes has stored on your, on your disk and try and have a look at it with a disassembler, you won't mean anything because it's encrypted. But it's fairly straightforward to get, get it decrypted and get it back off the, off the device again. Um, so that is the first step. You know, just because um, the phone vendor encrypts the binary for you doesn't mean you're safe for very long. Um, it's, it's really, you know, there are 
I guess the, so that's the thing with any standard technique. You know, every single app is, you know, is encrypted in a similar way, so there's a standard way to unpack that. Um, just like in, I guess, the web world, you know, everyone uses the same four or five browsers, um, and it used to be every, everyone used the same one browser, um, pretty much. <coughs> so you know, once you'd worked out how to attack that one, you know, it's toast. Um, the same with, with encrypted binaries. You know, it has to run on the processor in the end, so there has to be a way to decrypt it. Um, so, crypt, you know, we mentioned this. You know, if you've got an embedded cryptography key in your in your application, it's probably something you don't really want people to uh, to read. You know, and, and you can say it's a dumb thing to do, uh, and it, you know, it, it probably breaks a thousand guidelines of, of, of the thing to do. Um, but sometimes you can't avoid it. Um, you know, if, if it has to work online, it offline, it can't get something from somewhere else, you don't want it to uh, necessarily be asking the user for a piece of input, but you still want to keep some data, you know, uh, avoided, you know, hidden from casual, you know, someone kicking the tires, just having a look around. It might be hard to avoid having some kind of key in there. Um, so, you know, you want to hide those or you want to stop someone reverse engineering those. Um, yeah, oh no, I, it's not on this one. You know, a, a similar ex an, an example. You know, I was I, I was looking at a binary at, a, at, a, at an application that, that I use um, on my phone, and uh, yeah, it's not a security critical application. But I'd I was having a look around in this just out of curiosity, frankly. Um, probably shouldn't have done, but there we go. Um, and you have a look through this code. It's done nothing to hide anything in it. And they've got the, you know, fairly standard, as people do, they put the, the test server login on there, in, in, you know, embedded in the code. That's great. And then you look down the list and you find that the developer's personal login is in there as well. I just, you know, and then it turns out this guy's a security consultant as well. You know, you know what, that's really not a very clever idea. You know, if I was, if I was that bothered, you know, I could log in as you. Um, so, you know, those sorts of things people do. And you want to be able, you know, I guess, you know, by design, you might have to put a crypto key in. There might be stuff that's just left in there through, probably laziness is probably the best description for it. Um, you should probably kind of do something um, to mitigate someone, you know, finding that, uh, you know, so easily and, and making use of it. Um, debugger detection. Um, so, you know, anyone trying to reverse engineer your app is going to try and attack it, or to, particularly if they're going to try and change it. They're going to try and attach a debugger to it. Um, it's very hard, actually, to stop somebody attach, ever attaching a debugger to something. It's really, really hard. Um, but you should at least try and make life a little bit difficult for them by doing some basic checks for debuggers at the standard entry points and some places in the UI. So this is the, so we talked about, you know, some ways people are going to attack your code based on, you know, reverse engineering it or, or changing it. Um, I think that this now talks about, you know, some other things or practical things you can do. So, um, you know, I, I guess it's fairly straightforward. You know, the, the, you know if you're, you know, do, do good thing, do, you know, implement or use, use good algorithms. So if you're going to do jailbreak and root detection, you're, you're in for a bit of a battle, but you, know, there are, you, know, you can use, choose algorithms which will, um, which will work. Um, you know, do some checksumming on your code um, so, so that if, you know, the, the, the signature checks that are built into the OS is do some checksums for you. Basically, when it loads, it has a look and says, has anyone changed this? Um, well, if they've changed it, the signature is going to fail. So um, that, that's a very basic check at load time, but it only happens once. Um, you know, we you know, I'd suggest, or it's a good idea to, to, to do a bit you know, inside your own code as well. Um, certificate, I believe, certificate pinning basically that, mean, that means you know making your crypto keys only work on this device. Um, so that's that's about cryptography design, about um, um, you know, and, and I guess 
well, it's, it is basically it's about cryptography design and, and stopping people understanding how that works, if you can. Um, debugger detection, again, good thing to do. Um, and you know, all of this stuff needs to be protected from reverse engineering or you know, ch code changes um, to the degree you can, um, well, which is a, a, to a very large degree. You know, uh, So yeah, I, I, this, this is a catch-all. This is a, you know your mobile app must be. In truth, it's probably you know if you care, your mobile app must be able to to do this. You know again, there's lots of mobile apps out there for different things, doing different you know uh, you know doing different things in different ways for different people. And uh, you know for a lot of them, nobody's that bothered probably. Um, but if it's starting to kind of if it gives a way into some user database or it's storing stuff there that that's user data, or if it's controlling money or something that's worth money, um, then you really need to start thinking about securing it. Um, so you need to stop someone reverse engineering it for a start, because that's, that's just the very first step they're going to take if they want to do anything to it. Um, then you need to, to look at it at runtime, not just when the OS loads it. Um, or look at your code at runtime and potentially some of the other files around it as well. Um, I can never remember the alphabet soup of, you know, P lists and you know, whatever else there is. You know, there's all the different properties files around the, the, the app that can control what they can do. Um, I, and it needs to, you know, react appropriately. So, so you need to make some decisions about what you're going to do if you find out that someone is trying to attach a debugger to it. Um, 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 you know, what do you want? You know, do you want to log them out? Do you want to, um, you know, just give them a nice friendly warning on the screen? Do you want the program to crash? Do you want to send the heavies round? It's up to you. What, what do you want to do? Um, so yeah, there's some choices you, you as a as a developer have to make. Um, defense in depth. You know, this, you know, whatever you whatever you do in your code, your you know, it's only software in the end. So if you have a checksum in there that's checking whether it's um, whether someone's changed the code, it boils down to a branch in the end. Something's going to say, is it right or is it wrong? So once they've found that, they can remove it. So really, you need events in depth. You need lots of different things all looking at each other um, and all looking after each other, um, and you know, don't rely on one single. Um, control to stop stop someone attacking your app. Um, I need to move off this slide because I'll get in trouble because it's just slightly you know slightly close to what, what Arcsense product does. Um, uh, okay, that's fine. That's right. I'm sorry. I, I just I read the presenter agreement and you know. Yeah, and I, and I know that my children will be harmed if I say <laughs> my, my, you know, the company's name too often. So, um, uh, so anyway, yeah. Con so conclusions: binary attacks. You know, they are you know, quite common, quite easy to mount, um, um, and you know, the majority of, of mobile apps. You know, I'd say that the, the large majority don't do an awful lot about it. Um, we, you know, now the, now the lack of binary protection is in the top ten. You know, I, you know, I, I hope it's going to move up the hit parade in 2015. Um, uh, you know, as people start, you know, people realise it's a, it's, a, it's a major threat. Um, to stop it, you know, as a developer, you'll have to do something about it um, because the, the the things built into the platform don't do it for you. Um, they do some things; they're very good at some things. Um, but this particular attack vector, they aren't going to do anything about. Um, this part I'm skating on very thin ice because I don't really know what I'm talking about. So other mobile projects. So there is there's a link there for the OWASP top ten um, that that you know goes through that list that, that we had at the start, um, talking in detail about each vulnerability on the list. Um, I think that's, and I guess this is the uh, 
more details on this particular subject on the OS website. So that is the end of my presentation. I think I'm running uh, a, bit, a, little bit, a little bit early. But, um, so if anyone, has anyone got any questions? Make them easy ones, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you did mention if the app does anything sensitive, yeah. and you need to start thinking about how to secure it, yeah. which I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Then all the examples you provided yeah. on why you should think about implementing this control, mainly rotate about client-side validation or hard-coding secret, which, as you will agree, is probably you should avoid doing that at the first place. Sure. So my take, my question to you will be, it seems to me this control that somehow ended up in that mobile top 10 um, risk is about security for obscurity. And it's not necessarily a good thing because it hides the vulnerability that you have in your app and you should avoid, you should remediate those vulnerabilities instead of trying to hide them. Especially I that, sorry, <laughs> just the last bit. Especially that technically you're just making it harder because technically it will still be possible since this is client-side code to actually be able to see the code. Yeah, I can see, I can see what you're saying. Um, uh, that, that, that in an ideal world, you wouldn't need this. Um, but there's a few things that kind of make it a less than ideal world that, you know, one, uh, so, so, you know, the, there is the one that, you know, there's been lists and guidelines and scanning tools and all sorts of things that will tell you how to write code for, for a long time, but problems still exist. Um, you know, so, um, you know, that's the kind of reality, I suppose. Then you're also dealing with, um, you know, you've got mobile developers who have to get their app out in, you know, three weeks um, and, or you know, three weeks is an exaggeration, but a few months um, to get the project, you know, going and their focus is on, you know, just making the UI work um, and joining everything together uh, and they might be sloppy, you know, almost certainly will be. Um, and then there's the, sometimes it is just necessary to, to do things or you have things, something that you just, you know, however good your design is, um, you need to stop people understanding what's going on there um, because, well, uh, you know, I don't know why. why. Well, sorry, I need to think of, you know, to think of a good example. Uh, it's hard to think of a great example of, you know, where somebody, um, you know, just in the end there is going to be a vulnerability there. That DRM player is a great one, you know. Um, so in a DRM player, um, there's some cryptography happens, um, and it just turns out that the, the private key has to be in the player. Um, so, you know, you've got to hide the private key and, and, uh, and stop someone understanding that, stop, stop somebody um, then you know, playing around with the app, finding the symmetric key that's used to encrypt the video um, so they can dump it. And, you know, in a perfect world, all of that stuff would be handled in hardware, you know, and, and there would no, there'd always be no software involvement in the process. It would just get taken care of for you. But that's not how things are. You know, the, the mobile platforms are designed how they are. Uh, the, the, the user APIs are what they are, and they don't allow you to, to just take all that stuff away and, and do it by magic. Um, so, it's, I agree with you that in, an, in, you know, in a perfect world, you wouldn't need any of this stuff. I think in the actual world, there are you know, imperfections around that mean that you have to. Um, okay? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat the question, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, um, what's the difference, it's more a provoking question, excuse me, uh, a little bit uh, uh, under the hood, it seems to me like uh, you're doing license protection or uh, part of it is license protection or uh, license violation uh, protection. So uh, what's the difference to standard desktop or server applications then? What's I mean, the difference between this and, yeah, desktop, and, and standard desktops? Um, not a great deal, honestly. You know, uh, you know a mobile platform uh, binary in the end is, is a lot like a, you know, a desktop platform binary. Um, I, I think the difference <coughs> comes in where it's used and how it's used. 
Um, so uh, a mobile app, you know, for all the noise that people make about you know not trusting mobile apps, you, you really do. You know, you spend a lot more time with your mobile and, and, and trust your mobile phone a lot more than pretty much any other piece of technology. You know, it's it's there when you go to bed, it's there when you wake up, it's there with you all day. You know, you do your banking on it, you do you know all sorts. You keep in touch with your friends on it. It's 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 your constant companion. Um, whereas uh, and um, so. People are growing into the habit of, you know, you type a few digits into it um, and, and it identifies you as you and you're into your bank account. Whereas you don't have that in a, mo in a, in a you know, a, a Windows PC, for example. No, no, no sorry. No. Well, of course. Picking I mean, up a brand. Well, of course you have, uh, uh, in the Windows world, you also have uh, uh, some kind of sites which offer, well, downloads of uh, Microsoft whatever. And they contain malware because uh, people just uh, of whole operating systems. Isn't that kind of reinventing the wheel? I mean, there wasn't there for the, on the desktop. Uh, uh, it seems to me I'm not an expert there. Uh, it seems uh, there isn't really a solution. I don't know. I can tell. Maybe you can go this far, but you never reach. Uh, it's an arms race. Sure. I mean. <laughs> You know, to, to dance that very thin edge, you know, <laughs> that I have to dance on at an OS presentation. You know, you, you can do all of these techniques on, on, on desktop platforms as well. And, you, and, and if you have an application where you have this kind of sensitive stuff or you want somebody to stop, you stop uh, somebody cutting off your license protection, it can be done um, on desktop platforms just as much as on mobile. Um, but, you know, the focus here is on the, the mobile vulnerabilities and the mobile top ten. Thanks. <laughs> you get some you exercise. Yeah, you can repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing some exercise today. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, few. <laughs> do you see, um, like, as a par partial solution for, like, cryptography to use, like, TPM? Are you aware of the TPM module? Yeah. Do you think that is going to improve? Or, because then technically you can put your keys on a, ch on a silicon chip, then it will be almost impossible for another app to, to like, side channel. Yeah. Uh, spoofing it, on, yeah. Do you think that's going to solve most of the problems? Or? Just technically, it's a great idea. Okay. Love it to bits. Okay. But <laughs> TPMs have been in PCs for 10 years. Ah, um, not, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, how many of them get, actually get used? And yeah. um, I, don't, you know, I, I'm, I don't know anything about you know, okay. roadmaps and, and so on, but you know, mm -hmm. on an iPhone you can, or an iOS device, you can't get to the... You know, I bet there's hardware cryptography in there, but you can't get to it in a user app. Um, Android, I think, has started to let you, as of KitKat, do some things down in, in the hardware layer. There are all kinds of, um, you know, practical business issues around it as well, uh, where you have to have, you know, multiple partners playing together to give you access to that hardware to let mm -hmm. you put something on there. It, it just become it, it's it's never really taken off. So whilst in principle it's a great idea, so far it's it's never really gone anywhere. Um, and you know, if you were starting today, you'd still have to assume that. You know, your mobile app doesn't have access to that because it probably won't on most of the most of the devices it bumps into. Give it a few years, and you might be able to assume it's there. But I don't, you know, I'm not sure that clock has started ticking yet because right. you know it's only on, Ace, you know, it's only on the very latest Android devices that you can you can get to um, hardware crypto right now. Um, yeah, there is one on Windows Mobile. Okay, I'm telling I'm sorry. you, you know, do I, we have some proof of concept for even authentication? So. Right. Uh, but yeah, I can't. I can't say when <laughs> it will yeah. be available. But the idea is to give yeah. uh, an API for for developers so that they can keep the keys on that one. I, I think yeah. it's a great idea. <laughs> um, and you know, if if Windows Mobile is going in that direction, I think that's you know that's that's fantastic. Okay. You know, um, you still to drag everyone else along as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I get, um, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Anything else? I guess we're done. Thank you very much for listening, everybody.